So far, I've learned about basic strategy, and we've learned how to count the different cards, as well as convert that to what's called the true count. In this video, we're really gonna learn uh, some things that's gonna help ramp up our profits when we are playing Advantage Blackjack, all right? The first thing is I want to count out 18 low cards here, all right, to kind of represent a scenario. If I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, all right? And we can even throw in a few more for good measure here. If I have a little bit more than 18, and that means that my running count is a little bit bigger than plus 18, and there's still six decks left to be played, right? That's not a deck yet. So I'm still having a total of six whole decks that I'm dividing by. Well, 18 divided by six is three. So maybe you have a minimum bet of this, right? $10, and for every true count, you go up one green. So this represents true one, this represents true two, and this represents a true count of three, which is what we have right now. All right, the most important deviation, which is what this section is about, is when the dealer has an ace at a true count of three or higher in a shoe game like this. All right, if they have an ace up, you've probably heard it said before that insurance is a sucker's bet. And that is absolutely true unless you're a card counter. If you are a card counter, it is actually beneficial to take the insurance bet when there is a true count of plus three or higher. All right, to do that, I'm gonna get you a couple of two and a half chips here to show how to do this here because we need to take half of our initial bet. All right, so I'm gonna, I need one green, two fives, and a 250 to represent half of the 75 there. You're gonna play up to half or exactly half of your bet on the insurance bar. When the dealer has an ace and the true count is plus three or higher, which we know it is right now because we were counting, all right? What we're doing here is we are betting that the dealer is going to get blackjack, all right? So you've probably seen them check in their little peeker. I don't have one of those, so I'm going to check. And yes, I do have blackjack. Because of that, you lose your initial bet. But remember, this pays two to one. Because of that, since this is half of your initial bet, you're going to get those two bets back, all right? And you really didn't lose any money at all. That is the most important deviation to know. The second most important deviation to know, I wanna give you one more example here. But first off, remember, what did I do to my count? I know I had a few extra cards in there, but remember it was, let's say it's plus 18. Well, those two are going to cancel. This is a neutral card, so still 18. And this is gonna drop it down to 17. And so I have a plus 17 for my running count. So I might drop this down just to $50 instead of 75. And what if I get a hand like this? This is a 16 versus a dealer's 10. A lot of times when somebody gets a 16, they kind of begrudgingly hit it, which is the correct thing to do according to basic strategy. Um, actually, the correct thing is to surrender, but let's say this table doesn't have surrender. There's only about 20% of all tables that do, so more than likely you're probably not gonna be playing at a surrender table. And if there is no surrender and the count is positive, any positive running count, you actually are going to stand on this because the math says you're going to lose less if you stand at a positive running count and you hit at a negative running count when you have a 16 versus a dealer's 10. All right, if I were to hit this, I might bust, okay? And so I don't wanna do that when the count is positive because I know there's more higher cards in there. So I'm going to stand and let's see what happens here. Dealer has 15 and then they get the seven and they end up busting, all right? So by playing with a little bit of strategy using those deviations, you can win up to 20 to 25% more than if you didn't know those deviations. Now, what well, does that happen every single time that you win like this? No, it doesn't, but you are more likely to win by playing with those de deviations and learning the count along with the true count and things like that than if you were just to play basic strategy and that's it, all right? So those are the two most important deviations to know is to take insurance against the dealer's ace at a true count of plus three or higher, as well as to stand at any positive running count on a 16 versus dealer's 10. Now there's other deviations. There's something called the illustrious 18, which I go over in my course, as well as I have my top 30 deviations that I uh, kind of show people in my card counting course. 
And that's the next thing I wanna bring up to you is you've made it this far in this mini course and this is our last video, All right? If you are still serious about card counting and you want to learn more and you wanna become proficient at it, I have so many drills um, in each of these different phases of the basic strategy, the running count, the true count and deviations that are gonna be very good and helpful to go over. This is just the basics here. I tell you some tips and tricks along the way that'll make it so much easier to count. You'll become so much faster and you'll become confident when you take it into the casino. And so if you're interested in purchasing my card counting course, that's gonna be available in the description and the pinned comment of this video, as well as you might want to join my Patreon. I have recently restructured how I did my Patreon and I'm gonna be doing uh, some some counting videos that you can follow along with every single week on there at the different tiers available. And so if that's something you're interested in, that might be your next step to becoming an Advantage Blackjack player. Until next time, whether I see you there or not, remember this is A1 Blackjack.